Hi, we are on lesson number three. Um, you're going to find throughout the series that I'm going to do a lot of review. There are certain basic concepts that if you don't grasp them, you won't be able to move on. So yesterday we went over the keys. Today we are going to continue to go over the keys with just a little bit more depth. Um, yesterday we talked about white keys and black keys and their relationship. We're going to review them and then I'm going to show you how to play a scale, um, just a basic C major scale. You're going to learn all about scales and the different ones later, but we're going to learn a C major scale today and we're going to learn a chromatic scale today and how to play them with your fingers so that you can play them efficiently as you're practicing and as you're reminding yourself about each key. Um, again, I want to talk about um, how musicians kind of term things so that you can, when you're out in the industry, kind of know what's going on. Um, we find it useful to talk about how much higher or lower one note is than another. And this distance between the two pitches is called the interval between them. Um, so in Western music, the small interval from one note to the next note or higher note is a half step. Again, from C to the black key, right next to C, is a half step. This is a C sharp or D flat. Um, then we have from C to D, which is the white note next to it, a whole step. Um, we're gonna talk about all sorts of intervals. There's more than just that, obviously. Say, for example, you go from C to E. That is an interval of a third. Why? Because it's one, two, three um, above C. You've got a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, and then you have your octave. Um, we're going to go over all these intervals quite intensely later on, but I just want you to start thinking about um, there's more than just the half step and the whole step. The distance between these notes is going to be important because you're going to want to play more than one note at a time. Um, the intervals in some of the figures in sheet music we're going to be going over are going to look different on a staff. A staff is basically uh, spaces and lines that um, on sheet music that show you how to play the song. So each note on this staff corresponds to a note on the piano. Um, and above and below the staffs, those notes correspond to a note on the piano. So um, it looks different on a page depending on what note you're playing, probably because there are key signatures involved. Um, key signatures tell you how many of these black keys are used in the particular key that you're playing in. So let's take an example really quickly. You have C. C major. This is a C major chord. This is a fifth, by the way, if you're looking at my hands. Um, in the key of C, there are no sharps or flats, which means you're not going to be using any of the black keys. Uh, this is the easiest way to learn how to play a scale. I'm going to show you how to play scale in C right now. Um, start with your home, which is middle C. You're going to use your second finger here on D, move up, you're going to cross your thumb under here, F, G, A, B, C. Going back down, C, B, A, G, F, you're going to cross your third finger over, E, D, C. Again, so if you're going up the scale, and it depends on how far you're going to go and in what key you're in, you're going to be crossing your thumb underneath your third finger or your thumb underneath your fourth finger. And coming back down, you're going to be crossing your third finger over your thumb or your fourth finger over your thumb, depending on what you're doing. So, for example, again, in the key of C, C major scale, C, D, E, cross your thumb under to F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, cross your third finger over, E, D, C. Again, as a reminder, we are in the key of C. This is a C major scale. We are not using any sharps or flats, which means we are not using any of the black keys. We will show you later what that looks like on a staff. Um, now let's do the left hand. It's always important, especially when starting to learn a piece of music, especially at the beginning, do both hands separately at first. Um, 
you're engaging both sides of your brain when you're using both hands at once, it can be very, very difficult. And it's a skill that most pianists have to work on and work on and work on and work on. So whenever I'm learning a new piece of music or thinking about music, I often do both hands separately and then try to put them together. We're going to do the left hand now. We're going to do a C major scale. We're going to start one octave below middle C, which is home. One octave below is eight steps below middle C, which brings you back to another C, just a lower tone. Here we go. C, D, E, F, G. Cross your third finger over since you're going up. A, B, C. You're going back down now, so you're going to be crossing your thumb underneath. C, B, A. Cross your thumb underneath to G. G, F, E, D, C. It's really pretty basic and simple. Um, if you put both hands together, the only difference is your third finger is going to be crossing over when your thumb on your right hand is crossing under. And the opposite, when you're going down the scale, your right hand will be crossing the third finger over while your left hand is crossing the thumb under. So here we go. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Fingering isn't always important, but if you learn how to do fingering correctly with crossing fingers over and under at the right times, it can actually make playing the piano a little easier. So we'll go over that a little bit. It's not necessary in order to play scales or chords, um, but it can help you. It can make things easier in the long run. All right. So we've learned a little bit more about the keys. We've learned the C major scale, and we've learned a little bit about fingering. Um, in our next lesson, we're going to delve right into some other topics.